so here we are Tuesday evening well and truly back into the routine I've done my Tuesday evening cleaning which means that I have also been to Morrison's and done a little yellow sticker haul um, I have things not an awful lot of the things I should be buying one or two things I probably shouldn't have bought let's start with the good stuff broccoli was 99p now 25p that's pretty good uh, mid-range good mozzarella two of these and they were 30p each they were £1.19 for one mozzarella down to 30p each I can make use of those um, what else is on the medium good uh, fish I have some smoked bassa I made a almost like a fish casserole today using one of these out the freezer so these are good replacements because these keep for ages in the freezer it's like a poor man smoked haddock it's fair enough and it's cheaper so these were £1.80 they're both down to 45p they will go straight into the freezer um, roast hazlet I'm not entirely sure what roast hazlet is uh, but it goes well in stir fries and things and it's cheap so this was off the deli counter so there's whatever the weight is on that uh, there's probably about six or seven slices in there was 79p down to 12p can't go wrong with that that will last three or four days probably um, coleslaw probably not the best of things to get but it was £2.50 for that down to 63p so that will add a bit of fun for a bit and then the really bad thing I shouldn't have bought and I, I put it back once and then picked it up again is these um, the sausage cheese and bean bakes there's two in there they were £2.25 57p sometimes it's hard to resist I'm pretty good at walking past all the shelves now the bread counter the, the bread aisle the reduced section in the bread aisle which I do sometimes go to because that's also where they put all the eggs when they've got yellow stickers on um, loads of really cheap cake and cheap bread today it was like heaving and I didn't pick up any of it so I feel really good about that so that shop came to three pounds and seven pence and I shall do the usual and put all of that onto there so you can see what I have saved on that full shop um, yeah, not bad. It's very noisy outside today. What's the matter with everybody? So that was my Tuesday evening shop. Um, and that's pretty much it for Tuesday. Before anyone, well, if you've seen my last video, you'll have commented already if you were going to. Um, I have worked out how to use the new um, tripod stand, the new selfie stick. I'm using it now as a good really good little tripod very easy to use once my poor brain had worked out the basics of plastic technology <laughs> but it's really really good I'm using it to photograph these new dresses that I'm doing because it has a very long stand and because it's really easy to turn to photograph portrait as well as landscape I'm able to do those um, well and because of the the Cyberlink power director that I paid for was it last month or the month before? I can't even remember now. I think it was last month. Um, it comes with all these wonderful additional features now. So where I have problems with photographing product because I have no blank wall space to do it in and the backgrounds aren't great for what you, you don't, wouldn't want to put those up on a website. But I can cut out images. I can blur the backgrounds really effectively. Uh, so I able to do the photography now without having to move all the furniture around the room and try and hang a backdrop from the only bit of spare wall space that's in my flat so that's actually been really good and I'm really getting my money's worth out of that now so that's a good thing so yeah Tuesday over that's it well here it's Wednesday morning it's a glorious day 
and my car is like an oven. Um, so it's Wednesday morning, which means I'm off to my clean. The routine continues. Um, a few days away, my neighbour beneath, the girl who is now on her own, came back in her car with several large suitcases and a man. I think he's still here. And I don't know if he's just visiting or she's been away and they were her suitcases or he's moved in, in which case it may be that she's not leaving in August, which would be nice. But I woke up this morning at about quarter past seven to the sound of singing. Now I thought I dealt with that when the other one moved out because he was a terrible singer and would sing all the time and it drove me insane because the walls and the floors in our flats here are paper thin so you hear everything. Anyway so this morning he was singing and yes he sings badly and I thought please don't let this be a new permanent fixture. On the other hand, at least he doesn't smoke and take drugs. Apart from that, I, it's hard to tell who's actually down there. They're really quiet. So I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that that isn't a thing that regularly happens. There's nothing worse than waking up in the morning. And if you're like me, it takes you a while to come around in the morning. I always need a bit of time. I'm very, very slow in the mornings and coming round to the sound of someone's awful singing in the bathroom below you is not happiness making. Anyway, on in better news, look at the sunshine. And the weather is good for the rest of the week. So guess what I'm doing tomorrow? I am going on a hike. I'm doing another stretch of the Pennine Way, which of course I shall record. And I'm really excited about that. It's going to be my first walk in my new second-hand walking boots. I'm going to take other shoes as well, just in case. I've given them a, a quick test run and they seem really good, but it needs a proper hike to really work out what they're like. So, tomorrow I will be going hiking. Uh, so I'm going to get this clean done and then this afternoon I need to go to the post office to put the cash in and I need to send a vintage parcel. Thank you Nikki. I'm glad you found you something on my vintage that you, that you liked and you wanted. Um, yeah, so today is very full. I spent yesterday getting my head around photo editing for the new dresses that I'm trying to make for my Shopify shop, my Shopify store, and the new power director, which I paid for last month, and I was really annoyed about having to pay to pay for, has lots of wonderful added features now that I'm paying for it. So I can cut out images, put them onto different backgrounds, I can trim video to edit out the backgrounds, and that means that I am able to do the photographs for my products on, on mannequins like the dresses without having to deal with the background problem because I don't have any spare space in my in my home where I can photograph something on a blank background. There just isn't any room. And so I haven't done an awful lot of photography lately for garments because I just don't have a way of doing it properly. But I've been playing around with the software, I've been experimenting. I have drafted up my first dress because uh, I have several finished. So I've drafted up the first one. I played around with the pictures. I did a video instead of photographing them on the mannequin, which is what I normally do. But the mannequin's really kind of flat. It doesn't give the the garments any movement. So I've had to model it. Um, but given that the, the prototype I made for me, and I've worn it, 
so I know what it's like. Um, it's not too bad. So I've modelled it. Um, I did photographs and I did video and I've managed to edit the backgrounds so it looks more presentable. It's not amazing. It's not professional studio standard by any stretch of the imagination but these dresses are more for people like me so normal bodies not model bodies and although a lot of my dresses are multi-fit they used to get photo shoots on very tall slender slim beautiful looking models and I think I think it alienates customers when you do that because what they see is a slim, beautiful, very tall girl wearing a dress that I say will fit up to a 16 or an 18, but they don't see that. And it's really hard to get, I always really struggle to find plus size models. I found one girl and it's really hard to find normal shaped women to do modeling. So for these dresses, I'm just gonna use me. <laughs> We'll see what happens, you know, at least they're on the website and people can see them and because it's got movement, because I put pockets in them, you can't see the pockets on a mannequin. So when you're wearing it, you can put your hand in the pocket, you can take your hand out the pocket, you can turn, you can, you know, you could do star jumps if you wanted. Uh, <laughs> You can see the product moving on the human body, on a real human body, and I very much have a very real human body, don't uh, believe me. Um, and I'm hoping to appeal to that market more. I've only made, I think, is it four dresses? Three, one, two, three, four dresses at the moment. And it takes ages to edit, so I'm gonna do, go and do my walk, my hike tomorrow. It's going to be at 23 degrees, or thereabouts, so if I get out early it won't be too hot, and then Friday it's going to be 26, so I'm going to stay home, it'll be too hot for hiking, and I'm going to get all these photographs done and the videos done, and then spend the next day or so just editing them, finalising them on my shop, getting them all drafted up and ready, and then I can hit publish, and then the first few dresses are going to be ready to purchase. They're all one-offs, so if you're interested in, in any of them, um, you'll have to move fast. I say that. I don't think there's going to be a rush on. <laughs> that said, um, I'm going to include just here uh, one of the videos, the video of the one that I did, so you can get an idea of what I'm working with. I'm authentic, transparent. My shop is about as authentic and transparent as my YouTube channel. It is what it is. Anyway, that's my Wednesday morning update. <sighs> Time flies already. I've been back home like six days. Something crazy like that. I hate how fast time goes. I don't like this. Halfway through July already. What can you do? I wish I could slow down time, but I can't. Tell you what, people see me coming. <laughs> Finished up my clean, and a couple of weeks before I'd gone away, the lady who's at the house said to me, Can you go down to the cellar? There's something I want down there, and it was this foot bath thing. And I finally got down there today. So they live in an early Edwardian house. And it's got a proper cellar. So I went down there, I've never been down there. And I went down there and 
the original fireplace, well, like a 1930s fireplace, is still in the wall. And it's this big open space, it's really usable space, but like most cellars, it's damp and it's never been like adjusted to be a usable room. It's more of a dumping ground. So I found the thing she wanted and she said, are there some Sunday glasses down there, which are like ice cream fruit glasses, if you know what I mean. Uh, I said, yeah, so there's four of them. They're, they're lined up on the mantelpiece above the fireplace. So she said, oh, can you bring them up? I said, yeah, no problem. So I brought them up and I washed them in the sink. And, she said, uh, and I said, oh, that'd be nice. You have to get some people round and you can use those. And she said, they're not for me. They're for you to take. And I said, I don't want them. What am I supposed to do with them? And uh, she's just giving me stuff that she doesn't want because she now she knows that I do like selling it's like my mum and my friend it's like oh yeah you can have this and it's basically people who they want to get rid of stuff but it's too much hassle or they don't know how to do it themselves and they're not interested in getting anything for it that's not you know they don't care about that they just want it gone so she says, well, next week when you come, have another look down the cellar and see if there's anything else you want. So there's nothing down there we want. And there is stuff everywhere down there. It's always been used as a dumping ground. But they haven't been down there for a couple of years because neither of them can walk properly anymore. <laughs> so she wants me to go down there and start emptying stuff out. And anything that I can sell, take it. You know, we don't want it. So I've come home with these four Sunday glasses. They're not particularly old at all. I don't think they've really got any value to them, but um, I will probably put them on vintage as a set for, I don't know, a quid or something. Oh my goodness, honestly. People see me coming. I do like a bit of wheeling and dealing. I'm, there's a little bit of uh, Del Boy in me. I like to wheel and deal. I used to love going to car boots. And if you let me loose in an old cellar that someone hasn't been in for years, I'll find stuff. I love it. I love the decluttering aspect of it and selling stuff on that other people are going to use. I love the, the passing on of stuff in that way. So. Um, I'm going to be going in and out there blooming cellar. It was quite good fun actually. I love going into places like that and just seeing what's around. Um, I'm bit, that whole forager nature in me that's like picking fruit and stuff also extends to just stuff. I love the whole aspect of just rooting through stuff and looking for bargains, you know. I was going to go to the supermarket afterwards, um, but I can't be bothered. I was going to try and spend some of my Tesco club card vouchers because there's some things that I might have been able to get in Tesco for a discount and get some of the money back on the gift cards, but I just can't be bothered. I'm going to head back and have some lunch late lunch and get organised for tomorrow's hike. The weather is fantastic. Very excited about this. I only need one decent weather day a week when I'm not doing a cleaning day to, um, to get out on a hike. So as long as I get one decent day, I'm laughing. I was listening to a podcast while I was cleaning and it was about, it was really just about how to kind of shake your life up a bit if you're getting bored, how to adjust things to make things interesting again. And that's what I did a few weeks ago when I had that declutter and that 
big clear out in my studio and I moved all the all the desks and all the bits and pieces around and created a better workspace and it just created uh, like a motivational reaction in me I know I'm really excited about getting back in and making dresses and stuff again and sometimes that's all you need I mean life is very routine and anything that becomes routine can become really stale and you can just lose enthusiasm for it and we all need to constantly have challenges in life because even though we all say we'd like to retire early and do nothing and this that and the other if you did that the novelty of that would really quickly wear off because people are supposed to always have an aim you're supposed to be motivated to get up in the morning to do things and you know having jobs having to pay bills having to get the kids to school having to do the weekly shop having to earn enough to put a roof over your head for a lot of people is just the motivation to keep going because you have to do those things and when those things particularly I think become easy so they reckon that people get particularly bored of their lives in kind of middle age because you've sorted most of that stuff out and you are just kind of coasting like you're waiting for the kids to get old enough to leave you've been stuck in the same job for years but you're doing okay because maybe you've gone up in the ranks at work and the pay's got better but it's not really challenging you anymore and you just need to find that little thing that gives you the interest in life I suppose so maybe start a new hobby something that's difficult something that you enjoy but is difficult so maybe you want to get fit maybe you want to run a marathon or maybe you want to learn a language or I don't know learn to sew or knit or something anything that just adds a little bit more pressure into your daily life is what makes life interesting so I've kind of changed things up a bit in my little studio which means that suddenly I want to run my business again because now I find it interesting and the environment is better and as a knock-on from that I started the hiking which happened really at the same time but that gives me that thing that I now do every week because I have that little bit of extra money to put petrol in the tank and I can go out and do that thing I really love which is walking and not doing it because oh I have to be fit doing it because I enjoy it because exercise for exercise sake is really depressing but if you're out there hiking five miles and you're out in nature and you're out in the solitude of a Lancashire moor or whatever else it is that you enjoy like I do then that is a thing that is going to put an extra bit of motivation into your life and if one day a week I go out and hike somewhere and do that, that that's a really good way for me to add fun stuff to my week so one day a week I go out hiking there's six days left I have three days where I do cleaning stuff that's a motivation there is to I need to do that because it earns me money and I have to do it and it's the only job that I do where I have to take any sort of responsibility and turn up anywhere and that's one of the reasons I do it is because it's pretty much the only thing that I have to do for somebody else everything else I do is for me and it doesn't matter so if you're getting bored with your day-to-day -day, you don't necessarily have to change your whole life up just look at the things that you can do look at the things that will make things interesting even if it's just a new hobby changing your week round whatever give it a go 
So on the way back from my hike, I was listening to the second part of a podcast about how to improve your energy levels and how to improve your eating. It's almost like clean eating, clean living sort of thing. And you can always pick up interesting tips about what, you know, what sort of things you should avoid, what food can you avoid, what's the worst, what isn't so bad, all that sort of thing. And she was talking about, you know, eat organic, don't eat anything processed, don't eat anything that's got grains in it. All the stuff that I agree with, and it all makes sense. But what they never address is how do you do that on a tight budget? So, and you might say, well, just buy fruits, vegetables, and good quality meat. But you can't just buy those things on a tight budget. So when I go in to Morrison's and buy my yellow sticker holes, the only thing that I'm going to get within that is really going to be vegetables. I might sometimes pick up some eggs or something like that, but it's not enough to live on. And they never address how you get to change your diet on a tight budget. No one ever thinks that, well, you're the poor person, you're, you're the one who's victimised by the system. You've got to just live with it. So I'm going to be looking at that as a challenge. How do I remove all the ultra-processed food from my diet? How do I eat a much healthier diet that I know I need to like cutting down on the sugar and the carbs and all that stuff. Doing all of that, but still being on a budget. I need to work out how I do that. And there's no reason why it's not doable, at least to a certain extent. You know, you may not be able to cut everything out, but if you can cut down, say, I don't know, 50% of your ultra-processed carbs, uh, cut out the bread, the supermarket bread, if you can make your own bread, it does make a difference. So I'm going to use that as a bit of a challenge and see if I can offer any useful advice to people who are on tight budgets like me, but don't want to eat the processed rubbish that the supermarket wants to get you hooked on. Because it's annoying. I don't like feeling like I'm buying food that is making me sick and killing me slowly because that's what they think I can afford. New challenge. Saturday morning. Time for a quick update. Um, I am still recovering from my Thursday hike. I definitely overdid it a bit. I've just been a bit, not even lethargic, I don't know what it is, I've just felt a little bit fuzzy. Um, My feet hurt a bit, I did get a blister, but I think a lot of that is because I just went too far. If I'd stuck to the five mile mark I would have been fine because I noticed that when I started to feel a bit of soreness in my feet, it was after I'd done that five miles. They're definitely waterproof. My socks weren't wet when I got back and I've given them a good wash under the shower since then and they're still dry. So the waterproofing seems to work really well, which is fantastic. I can walk through puddles now and not get soggy. Um, I need to work on how I lace them. I'd lace them tighter up over the ankle and these boots have a higher over ankle bit than my previous ones which were kind of just over the ankle and I think I did it too tight because I can feel that I've um, not bruised I don't see any bruising but it feels like I've put too much pressure around the the lower leg there I can feel like I've had it too tight so I just need to watch that I don't over tight that bit but that's fine Um, and I need to wear better socks I didn't have the right socks on Uh, apart from that we're all okay uh, not bad. Beans. Um, 
My runner beans that I planted have officially sprouted and the broad beans, I planted three new broad beans and they're coming up as well. When I was planting out my tomatoes, I spotted one of the original runner beans that was hanging on for dear life. And since then, it's kind of really come into its own. It's starting to grow. So, I think it's perhaps been saved by, because the weather's been really, the weather's been really damp, so I would imagine that the slugs were still around. Maybe there's a slug season and then there's a not a slug season. But since I put the tomatoes in, it's really come into its own and it's growing. So I'm going to leave that one in because I have high hopes for it. We never give up until they're dead. And then when the other ones that are the seedlings that I've just planted are of a size, I will put those out and plant those amongst the other tomatoes. So I think we'll have a better season. That's probably the way to do it. I, I need to get them out and planted when I put the tomatoes in. There's no point in doing it separately, which of course means that it's going to be a slightly later season for them because it takes a while to get the tomatoes up to the point where they're ready to plant out. But if I plant everything at the same time, they should all be ready to plant out at roughly the same time. Runner beans and broad beans are very enthusiastic. When you plant them, they come up in a week. And then they just go absolutely insane, which is what I love about them. They're such a responsive little plant. So I'm looking forward to having an actual runner bean harvest, even though it's going to be a bit later, and uh, a second broad bean harvest. They've been really good. The black flies have now moved in, but the plants are still producing broad beans, so um, I'm enjoying that. So that's been good. I think I'm better off... Just sticking to what will grow in my pots. So the tomatoes, the runner beans, the broad beans. Um, that's pretty much the outdoor stuff. I can plant things like mint and I've got the walking onions and things. But they're kind of there all the time anyway. So we're not doing too bad. Saturday morning, right, I'm off to do my clean. We had really hot weather the last couple of days. It's gone now, but it's still quite stuffy. It's quite warm in here. I had to have windows open all night because it's been really warm and um, we were promised rain today the rain is now coming overnight so I'm going to keep it on the plants because I might need to give them a bit of a top up 